As a content creator, do you struggle with how to use all of your content in the best way? Well, on this episode of Dealcasters, we talk to the CEO of Lately, Kate Bradley Chernis, who's changing the world of content repurposing using artificial intelligence. Kate is not only the rocking CEO of Lately, but also understands the challenges of your content creation. She has an amazing story of resilience and persistence that has led her to found a company that is charting the way ahead and how you as a client can use artificial intelligence to not only create content quickly, but effectively. What have you done for me lately? Let's find out. Hey, you guys. How's it going? <laughs> have you ever used that photo before on any podcast or any stream? Uh, that no, like that one, you guys got that one first, that particular one. <gasps> Tell you what awesome. it is, by the way. So that little guitar, my, my husband is a guitar player and I don't know, it's some collection item, whatever, but he fixed it up for somebody. We had it. They loan each other guitars. That's what, what guys do, I guess, you know? So we had it on loan and we got kind of drunk one night and we we're like, let's, <laughs> let's set up. He was a, he was a fashion photographer in the city for years um, and assisted Gilbert Simone and Patrick de Machelier and like all these guys, right? The guys. And so he had all of his set paper and stuff like that. And we used to set it up in the living room and then just do photo shoots, you know? So we're like, let's get the guitar out and let's do jumps, you know? <laughs> and so... We were doing those and we had gotten engaged uh, about a month before and we thought, this is like 10 years ago. So before everyone was doing photo sets for their weddings or whatever. And we're like, hey, let's do this for our wedding. And the people who own that guitar actually came and picked it up like randomly. They were like, oh, we don't want to loan it to you anymore. Like we want it back. And so we took a picture of it beforehand, blew it up into almost life size and then built a two replicas so that our guests at our wedding could like dress up like us. We took this whole series of, of rock oh, shots. Okay. Yeah. Like there's a whole bunch of them. That's, that's just one of them. And they all make me look like I play guitar, which I don't, <laughs> but he does. <laughs> you look so comfortable. It looks like you're just like, you know, I don't know what song, a Ramon song, maybe. I mean, who knows what you're playing. Oh, I think there. we had some Boston on when that night when we were oh, pretty more stressed. than a feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, what's great is people, at, just like now we've learned with marketing and how I was in radio, is that people love to go behind the scenes. They want a sneak peek of like, yes. what's it really like? And so for the wedding, that's what we decided to do was... So not to go on about weddings, but I made... Um, the All the wedding invitations were backstage badges that you wore around your neck. <laughs> and because we couldn't wow. afford to ha pay for everybody because we paid for ourselves, we had little... Um, all access passes and then after show only, <laughs> you know, for like the drinks and stuff like that. How fun is that? It was really, it was great. And we, we just wanted to give people like a feeling of what it's like, what our lives were like, because they were pretty cool. I mean, we didn't make a lot of money, but you know, David was, he, he was managed by Cheap Tricks Management. So he used to open up for Cheap Trick and the Dixie Chicks, you know, it's pretty cool. And then I met some cool people along the way too, you know. So. Yeah, that's always the first question if you're in the music business is, so what artists have you met, you know, and, and what are your favorite artists? But I don't know about you, but my favorite uh, response to that is, these were the artists that I was most friendly with that seemed like cool. It, you know, obviously, like you talk about these big artists, I've met Prince and Prince was great. But I've also met some artists that like no one knows, but I had a great time with and they were fantastic people. And those are the ones that, that I remember that no one else does. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I dated most of them because <laughs> that was my job hazard. <laughs> you know, and, and I thought I was done and, until this, this one real nice guy came along. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I, I can tell you some stories about some people, you know, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, okay. That sounds good. good. You'll have to create a book someday about that. Oh, the book is going to be amazing. I mean, it's going to be mostly about all the investors who've pissed me off um, since, but... <laughs> But yeah, what has been wonderful is like that journey, I wouldn't trade it for the world because I learned, I learned so much about me, music, especially like, honestly, I didn't know a lot about music. I'm, and I'm still one of those people that most of the stuff I talk about, I know just enough to have the conversation because my brain isn't big enough for, you know, I got a lot of stuff I got to talk about here. And it used to pick, piss off my music director so badly because he couldn't believe I didn't know, you know, like who Poco was for, or something like that. Right. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, that's pretty 
fucking obscure, you know, but I'll try to, I'll try to make like, a, and I remember one time I, I said that the Finn brothers in writing on a newsletter were from Australia instead of New Zealand. Right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, then I got so. really dinged for that, but I was like, everybody makes this mistake. So I learned early and, and uh, the fans didn't care. Right. Then you just got more attention for it. So I learned early on that just being my authentic self and not, I used to worry that like, oh no, I don't know everything. So these boys, the, the boys club is going to ding me for it. Right. Mm-hmm. But then I realized that the more you just admit it, <laughs> yeah. the more other people are like, yeah, me neither. Cool. Right. And yeah. so, so if you're in like, uh, it, this, this totally equates in, in a lot of ways. Like nobody that you dealt with at the time probably remembers any of that stuff. You remember yeah. it. And at the time, it probably was horrifying initially, maybe. And like, and you know, you feel that rush of your face and it's sort of like, if you're a content <laughs> creator and you're like afraid to fire up your microphone or, or turn on your camera or do whatever you got to do because it has to be abs- absolutely perfect. And you're just afraid to, you know, hit the damn button and yeah. just start and go and get those reps in and, and, and try to make... Because that first video you put up, if you made a mistake, if you said, you know, New Zealand instead of Australia, or if you, uh, you know, dropped an F-bomb by accident or anything like that, no one's going to remember it, you know, except you. So why not just put it past yourself and just, and just kind of move on? So that's awesome that you, that you were able yeah. to do that. Thank you. In fact, you know, one of the best um, pieces of advice that one of my radio mentors gave me was, he said, silence is really powerful. I practiced and I tried to use that a lot and I, we use it in our marketing now. So that space, you know, so when we're doing a demo, sometimes it just means letting people talk or sell the product for you, which they do, you know, so that's amazing. Sometimes it's doing what I just did. I just slowed down the conversation, right? And I'm sure some people leaned in because that's what happens when you have silence, right? It's good trick. Now I'm noticing it. I didn't notice it before. And now that you said it, I'm noticing it. <laughs> it's true. And, and like, I know you do, you're involved in sales and that's, that's a big thing is, is the number one tool that you have is not your CRM system. It's not even your social media planner. It's your ability to listen to your customers because they're going to tell you what you want, what they want, I should say. Yeah. And to, it's a little bit tricksy, right? I think about it in writing as well, because that's what, how we're all marketing a lot is even, even video, there's writing here, right? What's the space between the words looking like, or even, even sometimes physical space, but even a comma or a period, those things create space in how you read text, right? So we all know that when you're reading text, you hear it in your head as a voice. And so is there enough space in the actual text so that when you hear it, there's the pauses like with an ellipsis or an end dash in the right places to help emphasize the right thing. So, which is all a long way of saying it's related, right? Whether it's radio or marketing or AI, for me, it's a, it's a big old mixing pot. <laughs> so Kate, what brought you to start lately? Yeah. <laughs> Steve Blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's all his fault, my co-founder. <laughs> um, but but not really. I mean, the so the beginning. Would you like the long story or the short story? <laughs> We'd like whatever story you want to tell us, Kate. That's. I mean, we have all the time in the world. All right. Well, so raise your hand out there if you're an underdog, because this is totally for you. If you're a female founder, underdog, or a guy, or any kind of person that just you know has ever been in that place where. Maybe you feel squashed and people weren't listening to your ideas, which that's how I felt. You know, in radio, it's a boys' club; it still is, yeah. and um, and not that there's anything wrong with guys. This is just about exclusivity and like putting up that wall. And I was sexually harassed constantly, and and I even participated in it because it was totally normal and it, it was expected. And which is weird to say that now, but we, we have a lot more information about those things now. And I was in a hostile working environment, which I didn't know. We didn't have that language before. I didn't know what that meant. And that was the idea of people using sexually charged whatever in order to make you feel uncomfortable or to just kind of make you feel invalidated or like my ideas weren't taken seriously. And I was very, I was so frustrated because I couldn't figure out why I wasn't quote succeeding. I, I couldn't get an A plus like I, you know, like in school, I was, I was doing everything. And I still wasn't getting the grade. And it really bothered me. And my body started to fail me. So I had like this huge rash on my torso that they couldn't diagnose. And I had fallen down the stairs at work and I 
tore a tendon in my ankle and I re- kept re-tearing it. So like I was in crutches or, or in a wheelchair for most of my time there. And then um, finally my arms st- started, my hands and arms, I had so much pain that I couldn't type or even touch a phone. And then I was deemed to be have a partial permanent disability. They said that I was unhealable, which was like a really sh- crappy thing to hear, as you might imagine. And um, I was scared because suddenly I couldn't do the thing that you and everybody else needs to do to survive. Like I, I was thinking, okay, I can't touch a keyboard. Can I, can I work at McDonald's? No. I mean, probably not, right? I can't even work at the cash, the cash register at the grocery store. And so I, first I got an intern to work for me. I hired them myself because XM wouldn't help me because they didn't, I didn't look like there was anything wrong with me. Nobody relieved me and people didn't have this back then. It's, you know, um, epicondylitis and tendonitis. And so then I f- learned about Dragon, naturally speaking, which was a new thing. People didn't know what that was. And there's a few experts in the country at the time. And one of them happened to live in DC, this woman, Krista. I couldn't pay her, but I had like a couple hundred CDs and she was a fan. <laughs> so that was really lucky. And she helped me because learning Dragon Naturally Speaking, um, which is the, the AI engine behind um, and the voice engine behind Siri, by the way, it's like learning a whole language. I mean, you, you really have to spend a lot of time with it. So I did this and XM wouldn't let me use the software at work because, you know, they're a big company and they're, you know, the IT team, they had to pass all these integrations and yada, yada. And so I was like, had to get out. So I went to another music related company and the same thing. There was an HR team that didn't believe me and wouldn't help me and the boys club and all that. And I was a really unhappy person because I was scared and I was doing everything I could think of to do. Every kind of Western and Eastern medicine. And my dad was really sick of it because I was crying a lot. And so he shook me by the shoulders one day, like lovingly, but he said, you can't work for other people and there's no shame in that. So that was kind of a big deal because he hit on the shame because this is what I felt. My, my instinct wasn't like, you guys aren't listening to me or respecting me. My instinct was, well, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, and that to this day feels really bad. I, that's my first default generally anyways, even now, you know, and it is for a lot of women specifically that I know. So the other thing that happened was I read a self-help book. <laughs> Remember I was trying to do everything that I could. And, um, yeah. It was a really corny book, The Secret. Remember that book? Oh, yeah. Worst movie. <laughs> when I, <laughs> why did I torture myself on that stuff? Because um, I was trying to make a change and I, I remembered reading it and, and thinking, well, this isn't a secret at all. This is just a mindset. And when I'm doing something that I feel awesome at, like was, if I was rock climbing and I, the first time I climbed a 512, like I wasn't thinking, you're a jerk. You're an idiot. You suck. I was thinking, I'm the best, you know? So I decided to stop talking about how much I hated work. But that was really hard. <laughs> My friends from work who hated work too, we like had nothing to say to each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, and David, my husband, he, he at the time, my boyfriend, he hated his work too. And so we were both like toxic, just kind of perpetuating these mm. feelings. And um, my, then he, so that this is all happened the same week. Like David went to the bookstore and got me a book wanting to support me in a nice way like he is. And it was Guy Kawasaki's Art of the Start, a startup book, right? And I read the first chapter. It's like the first or second chapter, Guy says, don't make a plan, just get started. That's the worst thing you can do. And I was like, oh, well, then I don't need this book anymore. (laughs) 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 And I I stopped reading it. Yeah. And then the next day I met my first angel investors who I didn't know that's what they were. I was just a happy accident. And I was complaining about Bob Lefsitz. I don't know if you, you know him. Oh, Chris. yeah. He was a huge fan of my channel, The Loft. And he had written in a letter, in one of his newsletters, he was a you know music industry wonk. He was complimenting, making compliments. And he was giving all the credit to my boss. And I was like, that, I chose those songs. That's my show. And he told us that like he didn't believe that I would have ever made those decisions because I was too young and I couldn't possibly, you know, understand the music business like that. And and so I was complaining about this with a lot of F bombs <laughs> to these guys. And they were like, We love you. Let's start a company. And they gave me fifty thousand bucks to start my first company. So from there, this is the long story, right? Maybe I should leave some silence for a second. 
<laughs> right. So from there. So, so, so yeah, if, if I can interrupt for a second. Yeah, please. At this point, here's $50,000 to start a company. At that point, was the concept for lately already? No. So Not it was even. just, we're going to start a company. Here's 50K. So here's a story that nobody ever hears. My superpower is making super fans, right? That's what I was really good at at XM. Before I went to XM, I was at a little radio station called The Penguin in, in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is adult album alternative. That's the format I was in. It's a really rare, but very cool format. All the music we talked about, Prince and Matthew Sweet and the Ramones and uh, the Police and B.B. King, all mixed together and, and the album cuts, right? And it's, it really dep- it's really relies on the ability of older music to influence the newer music so that when you hear the newer music, you're referencing the older music, right? So on, at that station, I came in and I was there for three, I think three months. It was really quick. quick. And I, I knew I was going to XM already, but I had, it hadn't been in... The contract wasn't inked yet, so I had to kill some time. And I thought the ocean sounded nice. So I go down there to this total boys club. They had, we had company meetings at a strip club regularly which was unbelievably disgusting for lunch. I'm like, I'm not eating here. You, there's boobs. Disgusting, right? And um, it was my little weird AAA station, which was new. The guy, my boss had brought, he was introducing that to the area with smooth jazz and classic rock. And I think maybe a, a top 40 station. So that's what they owned. And I was a production director, which means you write the commercials and you do all the sound drops between the songs, right? That say, you're listening to 1047, the point, or whatever it is. And so I made all that stuff. And he said that we could bring in records and play whatever we wanted. And so every night I would go, I would take the playlist and I would totally unschedule and rearrange the whole thing because it didn't make sense to me. And I would play songs that I would bring in as well. And so I was on the air. My voice is on the air. It was my arrangement of the music. And it was my commercials <laughs> that I produced or were doing. And then my, my drops. And so when I went to XM, I was there in like January or February. And, and um, my old boss called me and he said, Hey, we got the book, the Arbitron book, which is what radio uses to figure out how to sell you stuff. It's like Nielsen for radio, right? <laughs> Where people do a little poll and tell them when they're listening. And he's like, you're number one. And I was like, what? Because AAA is never number one. It's always like number 20, 30 in the market, low down, right? Number, the AAA true. station was number one in the market. My show and evenings, number one. Evenings was number one over classic rock. And I'm sure the strength of that station compared to these others that were on the chart were minimal compared to these major stations. That's amazing. I, I didn't even believe him. And he's like, what did you do? And I was like... <laughs> I threw out your playlist, <laughs> you know, um, but what I, what I did was, you know, I left in mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. Oh my God. Just, when you were talking about that feeling of blushing and, and that wave of warmth coming over you when you're embarrassed, like I felt that all the time. I still have nightmares about that. This does tie into lately, believe it or not. But like, I was so particular about the segue and how it sounded that I had to hear it before I played it. And if I didn't, I would rather have silence, literally. And that happened all the time. There'd be like 30 seconds of dead air because I'm trying to get it right, you know? Not kidding. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we still do this. Like me and my husband will have like music nights downstairs where I like, he'll he'll play a song then I will, but eventually I just elbow him him out of the way. And I'm like, (laughs) let me take over here. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So because a beautiful segue, and I'll tell you why. So, so, And so the neuroscience of music tells us that when your brain hears a song, it must instantly access every other song it's ever heard before in order to index that new song in its library. So think about that. When you hear a song, like your whole life comes forward. Nostalgia city, right? And um, because it's trying to look for familiar touch points of older songs to place this new one. And as we talked about, your voice is a note, right? Same idea. There's a frequency here. Mm-hmm. When you read, you hear somebody's voice. And so it's my job when I'm selling you things, marketing you things, to find those familiar touch points in order to couch my new thing in there so you feel comfortable and trust me. Right? Mm-hmm. It's all the same. So when I'm on the air uh, in radio, partly from the segues of the music and what music I choose and how I you know, arrange it, but also what I'm saying to you, when I drop the liners in, you know, and what kind of liners am I dropping in? Are they going to like, 
better stop the show or keep it smooth. And so my job is to make you feel that you have a voice in my show, even though you don't, right? I mean, I'm, I'm holding the mic. And my favorite compliment that I would ever get would be somebody to say to me, God, I really hated that song until you played it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right? What we did together was we, we, they wanted, they were into music. They were fans from XM and they were both musicians also. And we created a widget and it was a new song and an old song every day that fit together. Right. Remember widgets, those little things. Oh, yeah. And that's all we did together with the $50,000. So for a year, I did this and um, it was super fun. We weren't trying to monetize it. I had a lot of listeners and I learned about code, believe it or not, a little bit at least to figure out how to program the, the songs every day. And I got a bunch of people to work for me for free because I, I couldn't do it all myself. So I learned how to do that. <laughs> and Chris Bro, by the way, was one of those people. That's how Chris and I met. He was my favorite. He was one of my favorites because he's so hilarious and dry. And so his, his intros always cracked me up so hard. Somebody else came along as I was more or less doing this and, and said to me, Oh, you're really good at marketing. Would you like to consult us? We'll pay you a lot more money and you don't have to listen to music anymore. You know, bad music anyways, because I had to listen to a lot of bad music to find the good stuff, right? <laughs> So that was my aunt and um, she was the principal at the National Disability Institute and she had organized a pretty pretty revolutionary thing where Walmart and Bank of America and AT&T and the IRS and the United Way Worldwide, so nonprofit, for-profit in government, were going to collaborate together on this big, big idea. And so... So that so so she put me on the account. So suddenly I was like literally managing a Walmart account, and in my style, which was not corporate, I came from radio. You know, I didn't own a suit, and I I came into the project. There was about several thousand people involved. It became almost twenty thousand by the time I I left. But they all had to join together to help this good cause, and I thought, wow, this is a mess. <laughs> And I said it, you know, not not nicely either. Um, and so I built them a spreadsheet, really for my own mind to help kind of organize what was going on. And as I did that, I gave a lot of workshops, and I understood. I learned. I, I learned a lot about how small, medium, and very large companies executed content creation, or didn't, or did it badly. Mm-hmm. And I learned that it doesn't matter how much money you have or your expertise. Most marketers hate writing or are very bad at it. They hire out all the time. If they spend time writing or whoever does, they're spending like four or five times creating something. Maybe it's a blog or a newsletter or a podcast like this. Like think of all the time you guys go into creating each one and then waste it, right? Like there might be one announcement about it somewhere and blah, that's it. Trash in the wind, you know? And then figuring out how to unite thousands of people. This is... uh, The cloud didn't exist. My spreadsheet was the cloud for this group of people. How do we get everybody on the same page? Because consistency is the name of the game, right? We used to play you the same song in radio 300 times, hoping you'd hear it once, right? At least, you know, 3,000 for some crazy places. And so my spreadsheet system ended up getting us 130% ROI year over year for three years. (laughs) Yeah. And um, thank you. And so Steve Blood, who's my co-founder now, we knew each other. Someone introduced us. And he kept asking me about my spreadsheets because suddenly I had a marketing agency and I was using these spreadsheets for everyone. you know. And they were working. And he was like, tell me more. And I'm like, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> you know. And he kept... Um, he kept. He would stop by. He would drive by between New York City and Vermont, and so he'd stop by for dinner at our house a lot. And um, finally, he got me to show him all of my spreadsheets and the patterns and all this. And he kept saying to me, "Okay, we can automate your spreadsheets, and we can make wireframes, and it's going to cost twenty five thousand dollars." And I was like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I worked in radio. Did you know that? <laughs> There's no money." <laughs> exactly. I was a line cook before this, you know? So, uh, by the way, another place where all pirates live. (laughs) So apparently I really like, I like unstructured wild, you know, craziness, clearly. (laughs) And Steve took the money out of his own pocket because I was like, I had, we were buying our first house. Actually, I'd saved my, saved my whole life to buy my first house. And, um, 
he made the wireframes with Jason, who's one of my co-founders now, and they showed them to me one night. And he said that I was much nicer to him afterwards. <laughs> so that's the very long answer to your question. That's, that's amazing. And so there's a lot of people watching right now. And that story is alone is a great reason to be interested in, in lately. And that's a fantastic story. And it's a, it's a comeback story of sorts, right? And so it's, I love it's that. amazing to really to really hear that. And, um, but besides how amazing the story is, Lately is a truly amazing tool. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to fanboy in front of the co-founder here, (laughs) but I use it every day and sometimes hours a day. And, um, it sets me up for weeks and sometimes months with content that's created. And it's not just deal casters. It's the business that I have where I, I deal with, I, you know, I have other clients and there's other podcasts and there's other things that I do. And so it does, you know, there's lots of other social media scheduling tools out there. And some of them are really good. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie, but this one for me works best because where I spent most of my time, you know, and pulling in the content was really finding those nuggets, finding those moments, finding that spot in the video, in the podcast, you know, in the blog that it was written, all of that stuff, just finding whatever it is, because everything's just, you know, it's trying to drink water out of a fire hose. And at the time, you know, we're going through this podcast an hour from now, I may not even remember what that nugget is. I may forget what that nugget is. And what lately does when you feed the information, your, your keywords and, and, you know, and it learns your content and it learns and understands, you know, the lanes that it should, that it should go in. All of a sudden, I'm dragging in videos and it spits out hundreds of pieces of content where it's like, that's it. That's the moment that I remember doing that podcast. I remember doing that. And I, I would have never known to go to minute 38, second 17 timestamp here and get this, you know, 48 second clip where the guest said something that was key. And for me, lately does that. It says, here and you could integrate all of your social media platforms now LinkedIn video for company pages, which is obviously huge. And and so, you know, I guess maybe talk a little bit, if you could, Kate, about that. There's content creators right now that are like, what, why, why would I want to? And and what lately does that is is levels above some of these other social media uh, platforms. Sure. Thanks. And th- and by the way, I forgot to say this in the beginning, Jim and Chris, you guys have been such kind friends to us and, and lifting us up so much. And that's what this is about. Like I can only come back with help. <laughs> right. And uh, it takes a lot of help. It really does. And, and yeah. just so people know, like, you know, th- it's not trivial, right? Like every, every little thing that you guys say or do I mean, really makes makes the difference, and it's the difference between, you know, I think I shared this, but but my team, ninety five percent of them weren't paid for two years, two mm-hmm. years, right? Yeah. You know, and so like that's the difference it makes. I mean, now everybody's paid. We just we just hit uh, a million in ARR a couple of weeks ago, which is a pretty big milestone for us. Um, and and that's not even about not about. I mean, part of it's about money, but these are. The industry that I'm in, the SaaS venture um, industry, there's different goalposts and they move, they keep moving (laughs) all the time. And so it's very annoying and it's harder for for women and people of color specifically. So thank you. And Kate, I just want to say too, you kind of hit on this earlier. The fact that you had people that believed in you enough and and what your vision with this company was to stick around for that long without being paid speaks volumes to the culture yes. that built it lately. Thanks. Yeah. Chris Bro is one of those people, you know, Lauren, you know, everybody it's uh, I don't know why. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not that wonderful. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's been, uh, it's so we were, we were just, and I'll answer your question, Chris, but we were just talking to David Meerman Scott, who's one of our investors, um, because we were on with Mitch Jackson too. So I love hearing that you guys are with, kind of be hanging with Mitch and Clubhouse. He's, He's awesome. He's, He's amazing. Dead. He's such a good um, Clubhouse host too, which is 
that's hard. I've been, I have I've been learning from him. So anyways, um, and, and David wrote the fanocracy book, right? So the neuroscience of, of fandom. And we were just talking about, um, what, what is the magical thing that makes, makes people love and support you? You know, um, whether it's music or a brand that you buy or a piece of software, whatever it is. And I don't, I don't really know. I mean, like we all spark for different things. You know, but it's my job as the CEO to know how to wield wield the spark, right? <laughs> and no one to light it up. So with lately, what we do is two things happen. Number one, you connect your social channels to our brain, and the brain examines everything you've ever published for the last year across any social channel. And it's looking for the highest engaging posts, the stuff your customers, your audience likes. They respond to, they retweet and comment on. And then we build the writing model based on what we know. And we apply that model to anything you give the brain. So if you give a brain a video like this, a podcast with video, we will automatically transcribe the video. And then we will apply the writing model to that transcription and looking for those hot words, keys, uh, key phrases and um, ideas, basically, that we already know your customers are going to respond to. And it gets smarter the more you put in, the more it learns. And like you you mentioned, Chris, you can curate and tweak it and kind of give it some guidance, which you should, because it's, it is a robot in the end. And the human, as we're displaying here, is what matters. The human knows to leave space, <laughs> right? That kind of thing. And so essentially in a matter of seconds or minutes, depending on how long your video, we do this with any audio, we do it with any written content as well. You push a button and boom, you'll get 40, 80, 100 social posts. You know? And they're not just... It's not just social posts. It's like the best ones that we already know people want to like, read, or watch, or hear, right? Yeah, and it's not... You guys use the analogy all the time, and that is... um, Let me make sure I get this right. We get you to third base, and then you bring it home. Is that right? Yeah. uh, We load the bases, and then we bunt for you, or... I don't know. 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 That's that's pretty much the analogy. But it's, it's a key point, and I think a lot of people... In terms of AI, they think that it's automated. You just set it and forget it. And that is absolutely not the case. And it's, it's ineffective as a content creator, maybe a little lazy, you know, especially if, you know, when I, you know, I'll take this video right here and I'll, I'll throw it in lately. I'll have to chop it into, into bits because it can only take so many words at a time. <laughs> nudge, nudge to the gear developers. I can so, tell you why, by the way. <laughs> okay. That, yeah. That's, that's for the after show. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have so many users, it'll break. That's why. Oh, okay. Well, but, hey, nice problem to have, right? So yeah. I'll throw this video in there and, you know, it'll be split up. And if I were to just, you know, select all my social media platforms, uh, you know, for, for deal casters, for myself, for Jim, and then just, Whatever it gives me, turn around and shoot it out. Not that it wouldn't make sense. It, there's just no human context yeah. around it. And it's not like you got to spend an inordinate amount of time. You can program your typical hashtags, your, your typical ads, your typical... You know, you put in a, a link. You just have to kind of nudge it to give it some space like you talk about. But sometimes what you say and what the transcript is, is not... I would actually say most of the time for me is not what you're actually putting in that message. And so right. it may be, you know, at a point where you're talking about something and you're maybe you're talking about your history at, you know, with the boys club or whatever. I may take nothing that you say, but it will be some sort of summarization under 100 or under 280 characters yeah. that really pulls people in and the video clip alongside of it is what gets people there. It's it's yeah. that pattern interrupt and it's that attention. And for, for content creators lately, just um, it's just next level in terms of Thank being you. able to do that stuff. Thank you. And that's the idea, right? It's just to find... We're just talking about finding the spark, right? So like, let the AI find the spark, like you said. I do, It's the same thing. Like, So I actually... You're not even believe this. Of course, we use Lately to Market Lately and we use nothing else. And we have a 98% conversion because the AI is smart, right? But... I also and and so I let my team do that. So I will I'll ask you for this file, as you know, and I'll give it to Alex. Alex is gonna auto generate. Alex puts the human touch on it because I don't have time to do this. And then Katie schedules, right? That's how we do it. 
But I also go back and listen to everyone that I do. And I try to find five... I want to see how, how I'm doing to the AI, right? And I try to find five or so spark moments where I personally publish. And then the AI learns from what I publish too, right? So there's a reason to also do your own fully manual post because it gets smart that way. And it's been interesting to... F- we're behind the scenes, we're like loading the brain up with best practices content across all of our our database, you know, and looking for these human elements and how to better find... Do a better job of, of highlighting them for you or even even in the ca- some cases doing the summary part for you. So you wouldn't even have to do it, which is exciting because people, they get stuck, man. They get... And it's it's not... A dig. It just you know some people can can see through the mire and pull out the the nugget, and some people can't. But yeah, yeah. some of the same rules still apply, right? So it, you know it, yeah. what it's helped me do as well is understand Twitter better. It's helped me, you know, because I think not too long ago I'm like, I mean, do I even try to lean into this now? I mean, yeah. really, Twitter? I mean, there's so many other things, and but it's really helped me understand some of these platforms more because it's pulled some of those clouds away, and um, you know, eased up some of that stuff and set some things and and made it, you know, so that you know you're setting the ball on the tee, so to speak, to use another right. baseball um, sort of. <laughs> yeah, analogy. I can't do this when we talk to Europe. They're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You got to talk like. I don't know, cricket or soccer or whatever. Yeah, yeah, soccer. <laughs> but I'll tell you because because I, I introduced Chris to, to lately, and I and what it was Chris Bro when he did the demo for me, and he just like, oh, do you got a blog? Like I actually had a blog post, and he put it in lately, and I'm and I'm not kidding. Literally three minutes later, it had taken this blog post that I had written a few years ago and it created 150 unique pieces of content, and I was just like. My mind was blown. And I was like, that would have taken me forever to even think of how would I repurpose that. And you, you know, Kate, you hit on it earlier. So many content creators, like, like as an example, we've got this great interview going on now with you, loving the stuff you're saying. And it's so easy for us to say, all right, it's on to our next show. And we forget to do anything with this content. But with Lately, we're able to go back and say, hey, let's go look at that show we did six months ago. Take some of those pieces that Lately's already put in our library and we can keep that alive. It's that whole idea of Evergreen that I just... There's no other product that I'm aware of, not to say there's not others out there that can do what you guys are currently doing. Yeah, there's not. I mean, it's because... It's so interesting too, Jim, be like... You know, this is we're just looking at the DNA of copywriting and, and marketing here, really. But people forget, they get so lost in, you know, there's management tools and there's analytics. People get really lost in analytics, but the analytics really isn't telling you anything, really, you know, because what matters is the actual words, the DNA of, of your content, right? And so that's the way we think because it doesn't matter like how good those tools are. Like if you, you can't polish a turd. That's what we used to say in radio about a bad song. <laughs> Lipstick on a pig. That's the other one. Yeah, there you go. There's another one. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny how people like really... Because they that's such an Achilles heel. Just the, getting the ideation. And then the other one, by the way, is the putting that personal touch. People have a hard time with that. They get really stopped about like what their voice is and whether you should have a voice. You know, People still say to me... Well, what if I'm marketing to like the banking industry? And I was like, well, I mean, humans work there, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, and it's not a dumb question, but it's because like the, you know, this is what people taught us for so long was to be rigid and proper. And, you know, I was telling somebody recently that I used to go to venture capital meetings with like, you know, my nice jacket on and I had my little leather carry on, like, and my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> That's not me. And it wasn't somebody helped me unlock that and and just be myself. And when you're yourself, you give other people the the beautiful permission to be themselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, vulnerability, transparency, all that is it's important. I don't care what what business you're in. Um, and I, you know, I understand like this, some people still have still have a problem with it. But um, you know, people toss around personal brand all over the place, right? And so 
I look at the, you know, lately, um, you know, giving you the ability to insert your personal brand. It's like, okay, we, we've, we've got you to a point where you, your personal brand is right in here in this 38 seconds or in this how, however long this clip is. Your personal brand's in here because we determined that based on all the stuff you've already posted. So your brand's in here. You just got to find where it is and yeah. just put it in there. It's not... It, and, and if you know what that is, if you know who your customer is, you know who your key listener, your viewer, you know who that is, you know what their problems are, and you know how you're going to solve them. And those are things that salespeople have been doing for years. This isn't, you know, not this new. isn't new. Right. That's right. Yeah. Finding the common ground is not new at all. Right. That's why we always say the weather is like my favorite thing because... It's just so easy to instantly have a conversation about something we both know and care about, <laughs> you know. And especially now, you know, I was thinking. So COVID um, has been good to us in a lot of ways, but also it's kind of like my tricks aren't working <laughs> because now everybody can do them, <laughs> you know. So like everybody is showing you what their real home office looks like, and I mean, I'm like, this has been my ideal for like the whole time. Okay, what else am I got to figure out here? Like how what is you know, how much more authentic do I possibly need to be? You know, which is another word that we're all overusing, of course. Sure. Um, but just, you know, I wonder like once we get to the darkest corners of the backstage, you know, what's the next, you know, what will the next thing be? I don't know. I'm shameless, so like I'll go where wherever they want to go live from the ditch. It's Kate Bradley <laughs> Chernus. No problem. <laughs> My parents are going to be like, what? But, yeah. Okay. Kate, what are some of the, I mean, like Chris mentioned earlier, you guys are now able to put, uh, we're able to put stuff on our LinkedIn company pages. What are maybe some of the other things you can talk about that you guys are working to develop in order to continue to keep, Lately, kind of like pushing the envelope for us as uh, your customers and, and fans for that matter. Thanks. Well, so two areas, like one, the AI is, is growing up, um, but also the platform itself. You know, you, as you guys know, Lately is a really robust platform um, that you can do a lot on. And so we've been moving up market to, you know, sell the, co- sell the product to larger companies and really thinking about their needs. So is there an integration with paid? Can you, can you transfer what the AI is learning, you know, to paid? And the answer is yes, that's on the roadmap. And then, you know, people want social listening, for example, um, we do it sort of, but not, it's not the same because everybody wants kind of a more of a one-stop shop. So those are a couple of places that we see the platform moving into. You know, one of our features allows a syndication capability where one um, manager or CMO or CRO can actually connect personal accounts to every employee in the company if they want to and use the AI to publish out to those accounts or to push content to a pipeline where the, the salesperson or the executive who needs to do thought leadership can receive AI pre-written content and use it as they like, right? Um, instead of the old way, which is email it to you, <laughs> right? right? Um, and so we're working on ways to enhance and make that easier. And and really, we've heard a lot about employee advocacy, which has you know been moving forward, especially in, in you know now where people can't do conferences anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. How can you employ your army to work for you better? And then with the AI, it's been really exciting to. We did a test with with Anheuser Busch and Bev where we learned from one of their brand voices. We took a lot of content, fed it into the brain, and then pushed a button, and we were able to produce from scratch content in the brand voice, right? And so we actually are doing that with my content now. That's one of the reasons I do manual um, is because it's learning from me personally on top of all the stuff lately has published because people want to sound like us. <laughs> Right, that's why we do that free writing class um, once a month, and look, the idea there will be okay. You could push a button to sound like lately, but you could also push a button to sound like Gary V, or you could push a button to sound like the best practices for the mortgage mortgage industry or the healthcare industry. Right, so figuring out a way to again keep people starting them at third base. Maybe maybe they're getting like halfway between third and home. <laughs> 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 but you still are sneaking get... a little bit too far off the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, there you go. That's that's what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> so those things are like pretty exciting, and we're. Yeah. I feel like we've really, you know, this year. There's no handbook, which is why I stopped reading the guy Kawasaki 
book, right? There, because everybody's business is different, and you know, we hit some major milestones this year, and. But we also, and it's because we we listened to you guys, but we also understood what we were selling better. I mean, we didn't sell Lately as an AI platform. For the first time a month ago, we can say Lately is the only social media management platform that creates content for you. We really couldn't define what we did before. I'm I'm telling you, we've had had like a million definitions. They were about organization. (laughs) I, I can't even tell you the terrible ways we've said things. And that one probably isn't even that good. And we'll probably change it in five months. Someone, was, my my advisor Judy was just telling me this. Like, I'm really good at B 2 C marketing. Like, that's what I did for Walmart, right? And radio, right? But what I've had to learn is how to communicate how lately is both good for B 2 C and B 2 B because most of our customers yeah. actually use it for B 2 B, right? And because it's not something I personally have been good at it, not just because I haven't done it very much, I don't have the language around discussing it. So I've had to learn that language so I can sell it. Right. And none of my sales team, as you guys know, they're none of them are, are salespeople. They're all regular people that happen to be really good at sales because they don't sell. And but in order to go down, which we want to do, but we have to go up. So make the big sales and then we can open up a long tail where, you know, an average person who knows nothing about marketing could use lately. But we have to do it this way first. And right. it's been, I feel like I'm graduating into a new class a little bit. I know this sounds kind of silly. I'm proud of myself. And as we go this direction, I'm still kicking because like all the things that we do that are unorthodox make lately sing and I don't want to lose that. And as we move into this next phase where I have to learn maybe to put my leather briefcase back in play. (laughs) um, Well, maybe I'll put, you know, some monster bumper stickers on that puppy. (laughs) You know, I don't know what it is, but... (laughs) <laughs> um, some, some studs, you know, like you're going to the Judas Priest concert. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll pierce a few, you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, lo- I love um, how you're also not putting lanes around it just for social and you're, you're working with these companies. I mean, I almost, I almost feel like, you know, if a company is stuck, uh, a business is stuck, um, a person, even an entrepreneur is stuck. I mean, Jim and I all the time and in other clients that I work with as well, there'll be a concept and it's just sort of like, what are we going to call this? And what is this? And how do we, you know, uh, phrase this? And, and it's not just social media, it's masterclasses and live virtual events and all of these things that all these businesses are doing. It's almost like, yeah, let's brainstorm, right? Um, Let's, (laughs) let's all get in and like throw all of our ideas in there. And I, and I understand there's a benefit to that. I'm not, you know, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna down talk on brainstorm every once in a while. I feel like it's okay to flex that muscle, yeah. but imagine brainstorming even smarter, and and having a robot <laughs> in the room, so to speak, or you know, the AI in the room saying, "Here's everything that's already your voice," and then here's the voice of Gary V, and here's, you know, what I'm saying. And so it's, yeah, it's um, there's definitely all kinds of other things that uh, you guys are working on, and it's uh, it's exciting. Thanks. That's one of my phrases, by the way, that I always say, which is, it's always right in front of you, which is what lately is pointing out to you. But I feel like whenever I'm stuck on anything, I just have to... I've already done this thing somewhere in my life. And I just have to look at something else and sort of make a metaphor in my brain of how to apply it to this to this to the thing I'm having a challenge with, right? And that's my favorite, favorite thing, by the way. It's kind of, the, I think, the reason I love covers so much because that's what somebody did is they they spun something that you know and love into a new direction, right? And when they do it well, a good cover, I think, has to do that. Turn, I love the turning, turning the idea inside out and, and rebirthing it. It's, it's so exciting seeing you guys use the product the way you have. And thank you so much, by the way. And, and hi, everybody out there. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't know you, but I like you already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for for spending so much time with us. And so, for those of you who are watching, listening, go to lately.ai, try lately, and give it a uh, you know, give it a whirl. It is absolutely worth every penny we pay for it and more. It's uh, not only just a huge time saver for us. It really has impacted our businesses individually. It's helped us uh, with with dealcasters, uh, which uh, which you're listening to and uh, and watching uh, currently. And um, so check it out, please. Um, I'm sure if you've looked on Jim's 
feeds and my feeds, you're seeing many, 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 many examples of what Laylee can do. And if you ever looked at any of that stuff and said, how do they do that? How do they get all the time? They must have people that do that for them. No, 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 no. We do. This is how we do it. (laughs) We have our robots doing it for us. The robots. Yes. Amen to the robots. Uh, Thank you both so much. This really means quite a lot to me. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Kate, because we we love, uh, love... Love your company. Love you and all your team. You guys are, are amazing, and uh, look forward to continuing to use uh, lately for for years to come, or retire, whichever comes first. But you know, <laughs> Kate Bradley Chernus, who he was an amazing guest. Thanks again, yep. Kate, so much for joining us. Lately, AI is where you need to go and grab lately to completely revolutionize your social media. I call it social media ex machina. <laughs> It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> People don't realize Amazon, they're into everything. And maybe one of these days, you'll be actually able to publish content from lately straight to Amazon. On the list. On the list. Boom. Awesome. That's Boom. a tease. That, that, I can't think of a better way to end it. Thanks again, Kate. And to everyone, we'll see you next time on Dealcasters Live. Thanks for listening to Dealcasters. Congratulations. You've taken another step forward in your content creation journey. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button here in your favorite podcast player so you can be reminded every time we drop an episode. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. And if you're wanting to watch our shows live on Amazon, feel free to follow Dealcasters Live as well at dealcasters.live. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel where we also included added content that you cannot find anywhere else. If you have questions about this episode or have something you want us to review, you can also email us at dealcasters at dealcasters.live. Thanks again for listening. And you know the deal. Don't fear the gears.